What's up techies? Welcome to my Resurrected ROM series. To kick the series off, I'm starting off with my next 6P running Dirty Unicorns. I've been running Dirty Unicorns as my main ROM for about a week now, and I must say, this has been a really solid ROM to use. In this video, what you can expect is to go over the ROM features, what it includes, some of the stuff that I like about it, maybe some improvements or some stuff that they could add to make the experience better. So let's not waste any more time and let's talk about this awesome ROM that I've really grown to like a lot. What I'm gonna do for this video is compare this ROM to stock. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna see if this is something that you would wanna add instead of stock and see if there's any better features than what you get with the stock experience. So first of all, you're still gonna get the same functions with the fingerprint sensor, it works just as fast. So you're able to unlock your device with the fingerprint sensor and I like that a lot. It doesn't take away from that. It's really fast, it still feels like a Nexus 6P with stock. But the thing is, is that this adds a lot of features and I'm a features kind of guy. To me, honestly, stock Android is kind of boring. There's a lot of features that need to be added to make it actually a good experience. For example, one of the features that I really look for in a ROM or any kind of even stock experience is the power button menu options. Now I could power this off, I could reboot. What I like about this option is that you can either just reboot the phone like normal, you could do a hot reboot, recovery, or bootloader. I love using this because if I need to go into my custom recovery, I can just select that and hit reboot. You can also add options like the screenshot and I actually like that a lot because there's times to where I don't have two hands to make a screenshot so all I have to do is hold down the power button and select screenshot, bada bing bada boom, it's done. You also have the option to add some sound profiles here so if you wanna mute it with your power button, you can do that or put on vibrate, so forth. So I really like having the power button options, not just power off. With stock Android, all you get is power off and that just I don't know, it, it's not a deal breaker, but I really miss that feature when I don't have it on a phone. So as you can see here, this does look like stock Android. There's not too much of a difference as far as the UI looks, but you do get some options. So let's go ahead and go into the settings and show you what it looks like. You're gonna get some of the same settings as you would with stock Android, but the difference is when you scroll down and see the customization. I'll go through that in just a second. But just to show you what it looks like on the home front, you're gonna see that you got your device options, your system options, and your advanced options. Now they do build in the Super SU to the advanced options, so that's where you're gonna find it. You're not gonna actually find it in your app drawer like sometimes that you would. As you can see here, it's just not there. So if you need to access your Super SU, you access it through your system settings. While we're down here in the About phone, let me just go ahead and show you that we are on Android 6.0.1. So this is one of the most recent releases. I'm using test version 10.0. There's actually a newer one available but this has actually been running really well for me, so I just kind of left it as is. You can also see some of the kernel version here as well. You do get an option down here with SE Linux status, and it's permissive. So let's go on back to the customization options and show you the kind of tweaks that you can get to make this ROM really stand out. The first option here is under the general UI tab, you get miscellaneous tweaks. So let's just go ahead and look at that real quick. You get a toast icon. Some people like that. I don't use it that much, so I just kind of leave it toggled off. You get media scanner behavior on boot. You can scan the media, ask to scan, or do not scan the media. You can disable force close notifications, and you also get some gestures that you can do. Double tap on the status bar to make it go to sleep, or you can double tap on the third bottom of the shortcut area to lock the screen to put the device to sleep. So it's pretty cool. I like those knock on features that were introduced with the LG G3, I believe is when it was introduced. It's a pretty cool feature to have, and I like to use it when it's available. You can actually adjust the LCD density. I don't touch that because usually just the as is is what you're gonna wanna use. There are some warnings that you wanna take note of. That's why I just don't mess with it, but if you need to, that's where you do it at. Lock screen customizations, your bottom left and right shortcut, so you can change it from your phone or camera to something else, that's a really cool option. Typically, like the kind of shortcuts that I like to use on the lock screen would be my phone or text messaging. If I was gonna switch anything out, it would be the camera because you can double tap the power button and that launches the camera. So it's just kind of like a personal preference issue. So if you wanna change it, all you gotta do is tap it. You can do none, default, or select application. I'm gonna to go to my apps and just scroll on down to whatever you wanna do. And if I was gonna do anything, it would be the Messenger app, Google Messenger. And that's just a better shortcut for me versus the camera because like I said, you could just double tap the power button to launch that. With stock Android, you actually can't change the lock screen wallpaper. That's something that some people like to do. So if you wanna do that, all you have to do is just select these options and pick what you wanna do. Let's see, let's go to Star Wars, set that as the new lock screen, and there we go. So test that out real quick. You can see it changed. 
you got mid-screen shortcuts, which is pretty cool. And if you want to add that, all you got to do is do this here. Just kind of pick what app that you want to launch. There are your applications. So you can launch the camera from the mid-screen shortcuts. Pretty cool stuff. I like that a lot. And if you want, you can just reset it and you're good to go. The status bar tab is probably where I spend the most time at. And that's really customizing just the kind of look up here. As you can see, I got center clock, I've got circle battery. That's just some of the tweaks that I've liked for years now. I like to know what percentage it's on and so forth. So it just looks pretty cool. That's what I like to do. And if you want to do that, you just go to battery. You can select your style. You got icon, portrait, landscape, circle, dotted circle, text, or hidden. You actually don't even have to have it showing. If you really like a clean status bar, this is where you do it at. I do like to show the battery percentage because I would just like to know what it's at. So you got carrier label, you can change it, carrier, disable, status bar, carrier, or enabled. You can change what it says. So typically I like to put Bain Tech or something like that. The DU logo is what you see in the top corner right here. And that's just to show it. It's cool to me. I like it. You can change the color if you want to. So you can make it red and apply. And there you go. I mean, it's pretty cool. You could customize that. If I'm rocking a certain ROM and they have a certain tweak like that, I'm gonna enable it because it just makes it unique and it kind of shows off what you're running. The clock and date, this is where you can do the center stuff. You could change the color. The alignment, right clock, center clock. I like the center. It just seems cleaner to me. I like it in that spot. That's where I typically like to put it. I don't like to show AM and PM. Pretty much I can know when, if it's AM or PM or not. The date, I don't show, but you can if you want to. And you could change the position of that as well. Got quick settings, quick pull down. The quick pull down, which is pretty cool. I like that feature a lot because you could pull down from the right hand side and you get all the features. I like that a lot. It skips the whole step like on stock Android where you have to pull down, then pull down again to get to all that. Kind of like this action. You can see the notifications and you go pull down again to get to all that stuff. So I definitely like enabling the quick pull down on the right hand side. The brightness slider, and that's what I like right here. You can adjust it right there within the notification area. I like having that accessible because I'm constantly, if I don't have it on auto brightness or anything like that, or if I'm in a really dark environment, like at the movie theater when I went to go see Star Wars, it's always best to put that joker all the way down and you can barely see the screen, but in the dark environment, it's just right. Here's some of the other settings as well, like vibrate to touch, pretty cool stuff. Status bar items, you could change what you want to show up there. You can disable different things like ethernet, that might not be something you actually want on there. Notifications, you got tons of stuff right here that you can do. Breathing missed call, breathing voicemail, so on and so forth. I'm gonna try to speed up this video now because it's definitely getting long, but that's a good thing because it shows that it's got a lot of different options. The weather is pretty cool. You can enable that so you can get some more notifications. I like to turn that off just because, I don't know, I just don't want to see a bunch of clutter, in my opinion, but it's there if you want it. Navigation, you got your navigation bar, navigation mode, bar size, left-handed mode, pretty cool stuff there. You got your buttons, you got reorientate, volume rocker wake, playback control, multitasking, you can do multi-window. I actually don't use that that much, so I leave it disabled, and it's a good feature. I know a lot of people love it. You got Omni switch, you can start on boot, you got your different options here to really customize the Omni switch options. App circle bar. Man, this thing just has so many options. You got system, animations, expanded desktop, tons of options here. Pretty much you could customize it to every app that you have installed. The power menu, that's the options that I was telling you with the power button. These are all the options here. You can actually do screen record, that's pretty cool. Go right to your settings or lock down for the other stuff I don't have enabled. Recents, this is another big feature. Actually, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, one of the things I look for a lot this is the recent apps. This is gonna enable the option to clear all apps if you want to. Love that feature, I really like having that. It's definitely something I like looking for. Other options you got here is system app remover, wake lock blocker, and ad blocker. Get some miscellaneous stuff, your download center, Google Apps, and so forth. So let's go back to another pretty cool thing is themes. And I don't have anything downloaded, but if you wanna get more, you just go on here to the Play Store or to the CM Wiki. And you can download a theme and change the whole look of the custom UI. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up for my review of this ROM. It's got tons of options. It's got the options that I look for in a ROM. It's been running smooth. Battery life has been good. I can show you what the battery life is like right now, but I've been on my phone all morning. It's been pretty awesome, but you can see here where there's some moments to where Android Doze kicks in, and that's just really awesome. As you can see here, it's playing some Star Wars Heroes, and I've just been on all morning. 
With some heavy use, I mean, that's pretty good. It's got two hours already on screen on time. It's got 54% battery life left. It could definitely get me through the rest of the day. Battery life has not been an issue with this ROM. It's been really good. As you can see, as I'm flipping through stuff, just the snappiness is there. This is a solid ROM. If you're looking for a ROM to run, this is one I would definitely recommend. There's been no issues with it whatsoever. It adds to the experience, like it's better than just the stock ROM. One change that I would make with this, and it's really not even a deal breaker, is to see if they could add a different kind of camera app or maybe add some tweaks to the camera, Google stock camera, because I just don't think it's that great. So I ended up downloading better camera, and it's a <laughs> better camera as far as the app goes because you're able to do a lot of stuff like if you're recording video you can tap the focus and things like that just things that you can't do with the stock camera well guys there you go this is the dirty unicorns rom review really solid rom can't go wrong with it it's definitely a good one to check out thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it definitely subscribe to the channel to see more rom reviews coming your way if you enjoyed the video please give that thumbs up and until then stay techy